In this session, we're going to talk about power series, which is simply a series of ascending powers of x that we can use to approximate any function, assuming it is what we call well-behaved. And well-behaved in this context means that it's sort of smooth, doesn't contain discontinuities, and can be differentiated as many times as you want. So for example, this series up here, 1 plus x plus a half x squared plus a 6x cubed, can actually be used to approximate the function e to the x. And in fact, e to the x is so well behaved that it's what we call analytic, which means if we take this series out to infinity, if we have an infinite number of terms, this becomes a real equality. It's not an approximation. These two sides of the equation are exactly the same, which I think is pretty amazing. So what we're going to do is work out together now how we go about calculating the coefficients in front of each of these powers of x. And we're going to start by drawing a sort of arbitrary function, which we're going to use to help us understand what's going on. OK, so here's a function. I just made it up. We don't know what its equation is. However, what we're going to do is say, well, if we imagine we know everything about this function at one point, then we'll take that point to be the point x equals 0. So at x equals 0, we know everything about the function. What does everything actually constitute? Well, everything is the value of the function at x equals 0, the first derivative, the second derivative, the third derivative, and so on. If we know everything about this function, we can actually reconstruct the function everywhere, not just at this one point. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the first piece of information, which is just uh, the, the value of the function. So we know that at x equals 0, we know the value of the function at x equals 0. And we're going to construct what we call the zeroth order approximation. And as I suspect the name will suggest to you, it's not going to be very good. So if we take our zeroth approximation, well, we've only got one piece of information. So all we can actually do is draw a horizontal line. So if we know the y value of the function, and that's it at one point, we're going to have to assume that the function has that y value everywhere. So our zeroth order approximation just looks like the green line there. Not very good. And we can write it up along here. So g0 equals f of 0. Think about that at notation. The blue curve, we don't know what the function is, but it's going to be f of x. If we evaluate f of x at x equals 0, that's just a number. f of 0 is just a number, like 3. f of 0 equals 3. So g0 is just a number, and it's everywhere. It's not even a function of x. It's the same value everywhere. But we can do better. So let's take our second piece of information and construct what we call our first order approximation. So our first order approximation is going to look like this. So g1 is going to be something that includes not just the y value, but also the first derivative. So that means we've got a y-intercept and our first derivative, which is, of course, a gradient. Well, that's going to look a lot like any given straight line. And all straight lines are of the form y equals mx plus c. Oops, plus c. So how do we go about finding m and c? Well, we know that our y-intercept is just c. And we know what the y-intercept is. It's just f at 0. And what's the gradient? Well, gradient is, of course, just the first derivative. So that's just going to be f dash evaluated at 0, where the dash means we've differentiated it once. So we can now just write in our first order guess, which I'm going to write backwards. I'm going to write c plus mx. It doesn't make any difference. But I hope you'll see that later on that makes life a bit easier. So f naught plus f dash naught times x. So we've got our zeroth order approximation and our first order approximation. Things start to get interesting now as we move on to our second order approximation. So here we go. g2 equals what? Well, we know what we're going to use are our y value, our first derivative, and our second derivative. And we're going to have, we've got x to the naught here, x to the 1, so we're going to have x to the 2. So we're going to have some kind of parabola. OK, and actually, before we jump onto this, let's think, what will g1 look like? Well, it's just a straight line. 
and it's got the same y value at x, and it's got the same gradient at x. So it's going to look something like this. OK, so G2 must be of the general form. G2 is something along the lines of AX squared plus BX plus C. AX squared plus BX plus C. We don't know what A, B, and C are, so let's find them. So at X equals 0, the Y intercept must still be the same as it ever was, so we can immediately know what this C thing is. It's just going to be F of 0. What about B? Well, all we do to find B is just differentiate G2 once. So G2 dash is going to be 2AX plus B. And of course, at x equals 0, this term is going to disappear, which means B must be. So what is our differential of our function, f of x, at x equals 0? Well, it's just going to be B. So f dash of 0, because we're saying that we'd like g dash 2, g2 dash, to equal f dash at this point, x equals 0, which, of course, it only does if b equals f dash at 0. How do we find a? Last thing we've got to do, well, we just differentiate it again. g double dash 2 is going to equal just 2a. So here is our approximation function, and we'd like it to equal R should also equal the real function with the same second derivative at that point. So what we know now is that A must equal F double dash at 0 divided by 2. So we can write that in. Right, so we've got F 0 plus F dash 0 times x plus f double dash 0 divided by 2 times x squared. OK, so we've got our zeroth, our first, and our second order differential. And let's just draw in our second order differential. Well, it's going to have the same y-intercept, the same gradient, and, the, and it's going to be a parabola of some sort. So it's probably going to look something like, like this. Tough to draw as the orders go up. OK, something like that, right? So you can see, we know it's a parabola, and it's got the same gradient and y-intercept as the original function. OK, so it's getting better with each step. You can see that as we get to a third-order approximation, this thing might just start look, uh, looking quite good. So let's now go for our third order. And what we'll see is actually, we've sort of got a pattern going on here now, right? Where did this... Where did this 2 come from? Well, it came from the fact that we, when we differentiated our function, when you differentiate an x squared, you get a 2 out in front. So if we try and just write in g3, well, as we've seen, each time we keep the terms that we've got so far. So g0, f0, plus f dash 0 times x, plus f double dash 0 divided by 2 times x squared, plus something times x cubed. OK, something times x cubed. So if we just take it and we're going to differentiate it three times, g3, and let's say it's going to be of the general form, it's going to equal ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. Well, we know what b, c, and d are, so let's just ignore those for now and just concentrate on differentiating this thing. G dash 3 is going to equal 3ax squared. G dash dash 3 is going to equal 6ax squared. And G, and we'll use a little 3 in brackets, otherwise we'll end up with too many dashes to deal with, equals, uh, oops, equals 6a. OK, so our third derivative, you get this 6a, and our third derivative and you'll notice that all the other terms would have disappeared once we've differentiated it three times, our third derivative needs to equal 
F3 at zero. So we know now that if we just take this six to the other side, we can say that A just equals F3 at zero divided by six. F3 zero divided by six. Okay, so now we should very quickly be able to just write in our fourth order approximation if we stop and think what on earth is going on here. Well, all that's happening is that each power of x that goes up, you have to multiply, you have to divide your coefficient by all the terms that come out of your differential process. So if you differentiate x to the power of 4, you're going to get 4x to the power of 3, uh, 3 times 4x to the power of 2, 2 times 3 times 4x, etc. So 2 times 3 times 4 is 24. So g4 is just going to equal f0 plus f dash 0 x plus f double dash 0 over 2 x squared plus f3 0 over 6 x to the 4 plus f little brackets 4 0 over 24 x to the power, oops, that's a 3, x to the power of 4. So now that we know our rule, we can just write this thing in a much more compact form, which just goes like this. We can say that in general, if we want gn, if we want our nth order approximation, it's just going to be the sum from n equals 0 up to, uh, let's say this is our nth order, up to m of, well, it's going to be the nth differential evaluated at zero, and remember the zeroth differential just isn't a differential at all, over what we call uh, n factorial. So three factorial means three times two times one. Seven factorial, seven times six times five, etc. n factorial. Okay, and one thing you have to bear in mind is that zero factorial is just one. And we can think of this very quickly as saying, well, if we define the factorial function as uh, uh, x factorial must equal uh, x times x minus 1 factorial, right? That's like saying 7 factorial equals 7 times 6 factorial. Well, that makes total sense because this should be 7 times 6 times 5 times 4, and this would just be the same thing. But if we say that means that 1 factorial equals 1 times 0 factorial, well, clearly, 1 factorial is 1, so 0 factorial had better also be 1. Right, so we've got our general expression up here. I've even left a bit off for you. With x to the power of n at each term. And this is what we call our Maclaurin series. Okay, 